I'm Jennifer Gilmore and I'm an author and advocate for women in abusive relationships. I want to get to the answers to the questions that many have from those that work in the domestic abuse sector, getting an inside feel of what it's really like in their job role and sharing it with all of you. Hello and welcome to the next episode of the Hashtag Abuse Talk podcast. I am so delighted today to have Chris Green with me, which to be honest, I am delighted because I have wanted to get Chris onto the podcast for quite some time. Um, we passed briefly at the court said protest and then recently um, we were both speaking at Kaleidoscopic UK's event. So I finally got to have a chat with him and say, come on the podcast, please. Um, Chris Green is the founder of White Ribbon UK and I am looking forward to unpacking his journey and sharing it with all of you. So welcome, Chris. <laughs> I, it's, a, it's a pleasure and honour, uh, although I sort of recoil a little bit when you, you know, say how wonderful it is, because for me, I'm just doing what lots of men could and should be doing, but that goes without saying. Oh, and, and that's exactly why I wanted you to come on today, because you're so passionate um, and have been on quite a journey, which I guess... Um, could you just tell us, you know, where are you based first and a bit about you? That would be great. So everybody can become familiar with you. The uh, White Ribbon UK is based in West Yorkshire in uh, Hebden Bridge. And that's basically because that's where I live. And that's where I set up uh, an office in my attic to start with, as a lot of people setting up their organisations do it that way to start with. Um and then we moved to bigger premises and I, uh, after that we were paying quite a lot of rent out and I thought, hey, this is crazy. There's a building up for auction down there. So I bought a building which then became White Ribbon House because it seemed to me if you have an organisation which is based upon volunteers and you're not paying any rent, then maybe, just maybe, it's a sustainable model. We can keep going, you know, <laughs> um, and keep pushing out a message that uh, more men need to take uh, action and challenge each other about our attitudes, beliefs and actions. Wow. So when did this, um, that first step, you know, when, when did it start? When was this? I'm, I I'm was, talking years, aren't we? Yeah, uh, about 17 years ago, I was working at a university and I wasn't pushed for work Um and so I was looking to do something else around men and masculinity generally. And I looked around and I thought about starting or restarting a magazine. Um, but I realised that that would just go out to about 1500 men who all by and large thought more or less the same sort of things as me. You know, um, pro-feminist men is quite a small group of men. And that was the size that the magazine had got to before that I was thinking of. And I thought, I don't want to do that. Mm. It has to be bigger than this. If we're going to make an impact, we have to talk to tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of men and boys about attitudes and beliefs. And so I looked around, saw a model for White Ribbon Canada and thought, hey, that looks good. And mm. then I also saw that uh, in Australia, White Ribbon has a recognition rate of about 70%. In other words, what's White Ribbon about? Uh, something about violence against women and girls. That's important. That's what you need. You start the conversation. Um, and that's when change will happen. And so that was what I was after. And mm. so I saw that model and thought, that's what we can do in the UK. Fantastic. Well, it, it, you kind of have led me on to um, my next question. Um, for those who don't know anything about White Ribbon UK, can you tell us um, a bit about what White Ribbon UK does um, and what the message is behind it? It's about involving men in taking the White Ribbon pledge or promise, which is incredibly simple. The message is simple. The message is never to commit never to excuse and never to remain silent about men's violence against women and girls. Mm -hmm. So get out there, talk about it to other people, 
Never let conversations go by with, a, oh, it's only a bit of banter, mate. You know, just challenge that sort of stuff. So that's, that's all the message is. Mm. Uh, keep it simple, get the message, but more importantly, take action around the message. And the vital thing for me, it's a message to involve mass audiences. So White Ribbon tries to get out to sports organisations, to music venues and music campaigns. And we sit there are quite a lot now of campaigns around uh, festivals and music venues. And we've seen just recently the awful news about spiking of drinks and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And so the, there are people campaigning around that and we would join forces with them and work with them. And we've also achieved a lot through something called White Ribbon Accreditation, which is uh, offering larger organisations um, a recognition that they are doing something about it, but a recognition only when they are doing something about it. So it's about a 12 point plan and they have to go through all the stages mm -hmm. and people will say, oh, yes, we'd like that. Fine. But you don't get it until you, for about a year after you've started doing a process and, ta and taking the steps with your workforce to educate them. And that's what's important because a few, a handful of people in an office can't change the attitudes of the country. Mm -hmm. But if you work with organisations around the country, then you've got tens of thousands of people who potentially are hearing the message and can take the message forward on our behalf and on behalf of everyone who wants to see a better, fairer, more respectful world. Mm -hmm. So that's how we do it. I mean, it's, you know, it's fantastic. And I recently heard, um, so it's just word of mouth here, that Hull, which is where I am in East Yorkshire, is um, a white ribbon city, apparently. So I don't know if you know much about that side of things, but um, this is what I um, heard just the other week. And I had no idea you could accredit like a, a local council that way. So I that's, found that. That's one of the things which has been one of the strong points. It started off, I saw that a little town in New Zealand had called itself a white ribbon town. That's a brilliant idea. <laughs> and so I then went to my nearest town council, which is very small and had about three employees and said, would you like to become a white ribbon council? And they said, yes, what's it mean? I said, I don't know what it means, but we'll work on that. Mm -hmm. And we've been working on that ever since. And as I say, uh, becoming an accredited organization has got more and more onerous. Hull, for example, does, as an accredited organisation, has a group of men who meet, um, uh, Hull ambassadors who meet to uh, try and keep the message going out there. It has mm -hmm. fire engines, which actually have are uh, wrapped yes. with a white ribbon message, who get, and they go into schools to take forward the message. And they're, so they're taking two messages at once. They're mm -hmm. taking a message of, lighting fires is a bad idea. And they're also taking a message of, boys need to start taking action to challenge their their peer groups and everything else and it's great to have people who are respected as firefighters taking that message forward mm. it's no good me an old fella taking the <laughs> message forward i want people like that you know mm. to be to be taking the message forward they do lots of other things as well for example a few years ago the rugby club mm. had 20,000 people in the stadium and they said on the, over the PA, um, they had the, the team running out with shirts on saying men challenging male violence. Now, that's a start. It's not going to suddenly cause someone to, to have uh, some poor moments and change the, the way they were thinking, you know, the, the road to Damascus. But it, it will mean that it nudges people along the road of changing behaviours. Mm. And the telling thing for me, something which will, I will remember for the rest of my life, over the PA, they were told there are 20,000 people in this stadium today. That's the same number of people as women in Hull who are abused every year. Mm. And that's a very chilling statistic. And it's something which the people of Hull, the, the council of Hull is very well aware of and trying very hard to do something about. The other thing I'd say about Hull, it's the only place we've had so much engagement with primary schools and the message yeah. has to go out in primary schools, in secondary schools, in universities, in FE colleges all the way. 
And in fact, Hull University is also a white ribbon organisation. I mean, it's fantastic when you look into it. Um, so my introduction to White Ribbon UK is through my children's primary school oh, and finding wow, out about wow. it there. Um, and obviously, with the work that I do, ultimately, it led me to look at the pledge. I, I think I did a video at the beginning explaining how I'm silent and that we all need to share our voices to stand up as part of I think one of the years so I have to I send it to you um I'll reference it in the description for anybody who wants to watch it back but I think it is you know really important an important message and it gets those discussions and conversations and even if it isn't um that instant reaction straight away it's embedded isn't it within society so when we were at kaleidoscopic uk the first thing that you did when you came on stage was apologize and i don't know if you um saw the reaction from you know just the table that i was sat on alone but you know i even hadn't even it's the first apology I have had. Um, and I know it's um, not the person that, uh, you know, abused me, but it's the gender. And that made a significant difference to people in the room that day. And I thought it was really powerful. So I guess I, I want to ask you, why do you start that way? And why do you th um, feel it's important to apologise um, on behalf of your gender? Because it's my responsibility. Uh, it's man's responsibility because we commit 90% of all interpersonal violence. You know, people will say, oh, what about violence against men and boys? OK, that exists, but it's 10% of interpersonal violence maximum. So that's the that's first thing. The second reason it's I'm, I'm responsible because... Uh, women's organisations have been trying and working around the issue for years and it's, and they want men to start doing some of the work, you mm. know, so it's my responsibility to do it. And the third reason is it's my responsibility because some men will listen to other men when they won't listen to women's voices, you mm. know, and of course, of course they should be listening to what the women say, but, you know, Particularly if it's their friends who are saying it, not me, but if it's them, if it's their friends, if it's their work colleagues, if it's their relatives, then that's that will make a difference. So it's absolutely my responsibility. And the but the first why I say I'm sorry is because you know I am not men are not doing enough. I am not doing enough. Um, I, I keep talking. Oh, wouldn't it be nice if and it will be happen if there were lots of teenagers lots of 20 year olds lots of 30 year olds 40 year olds 50 years old 60 year old you know I'm still going to be doing this when I'm 70 years old you know but people say oh you do a lot of work yeah but I don't do a lot of work <laughs> I still do nearly everything that I do in maybe a couple of afternoons a week you know well mm. why aren't I doing it properly full time mm. you know all that stuff so I still say I'm sorry <laughs> Yeah, no, well, it was very powerful and very moving on, on that day. Um, so, yes, thank, thank you for that. Um, like I say, it's the first time anybody has ever said sorry for, for that. And it was, uh, yeah, it was very moving. Um, so, obviously, you've spoken about the slightly about the importance of um, men standing up just then about how they might listen to other men. What other reasons do you think it's important for men to stand up against um, domestic abuse then? Well, it, I, I, I keep, I, I'll reiterate those same <laughs> reasons because they're, they're, everything I say is, is quite simple. You know, um, if we start to talk about it more, then more men will listen. And what's so sad is, you know, if only a fraction of the three quarters of a million children who witnessed domestic abuse every year became, you know, male ambassadors, then we would have thousands of men out there taking the message forward. And that's what, that's what I'm looking for, you know, and that's another reason why it's important for us, for men to do it. It's important for men to do it because we get support if we, from other men, mm. because if I, 
I know that there are times when it's been quite difficult to make an intervention, to make a reaction. But I also know that there are other men who would say, oh, yeah, I was just thinking that. Oh, as soon as you said that, I wanted, uh, you yeah, know, I was there as well. And, and intervening with inappropriate behaviour of some sort or other, you know. And so people have to be start talking about it. And then suddenly lots of other men are saying, oh, yeah, I thought that as well, you mm. know. There was a at the beginning of the year, because of the levels of violence against women and girls that we've seen this year, um, we've seen more men coming forward to take action. A lot more women demanding men to <laughs> should come <laughs> forward and take action, but a lot more men coming forward and starting to say, I want to do stuff, I want to be involved. I'm not going to over-egg that, though, because um, <laughs> we're running a conference at, on the 19th, 20th and 21st. And its, it's whole purpose is to is, is called Engage Men or Engage Conference. Mm. Um, we haven't got thousands tipping up to it, believe me. Mm. Um, and we've worked very hard to get more men. to do. Mm. And the, the point is, we want it to be action oriented. And so our very first action on... International Men's Day is to have pickets at the courts in London and Manchester at midday on the 19th of November mm -hmm. to just say, it, this is men saying, look, the courts and the police are letting down women over and over again. I, You said you mentioned, met me at the court said mm -hmm. protest yeah. and actually listening to mm. what the women said at that demonstration I, I my mouth dropped open you know and I just thought, how can a so-called judicial organization be so biased against women I mean just I just you know and okay I don't want to, I don't need to start you <laughs> off on that but but I, I I heard that and over and over again I keep hearing testimonies from women and thinking wow we need to do more and mm. uh, the latest one this year as well has been the testimonies from women in, and girls in schools um, mm. called yes. um, Everybody's Welcome, Everybody's Invited. Um, and I was really impressed that one young man uh, took it upon himself to go to his former school and say, look, there are 200 testimonies of young women here who've been abused by young men at who were students at this school, what are you going to do about it as a school? And I think, mm. yes, that's exactly what we need to do more of. You know, young men holding their institutions to account. Yeah. And I think we need to do that more and more and more. Men, men have to do it to hold institutions to account as well as themselves. Yes, no, and um, it's sadly, I, I really wanted my husband to be on the call today, um, but I did not think about the timing and child uh, care <laughs> situations there. But my husband is definitely, you know, he has got white ribbon on his coat all the time. You know, he will even say to me, do you think that person needs help? Do you, you know, the way they were talking? And he personally helped me as well. And he's definitely um, somebody wondering about his position in terms of being able to help, in terms of, well, I'm just a man, you know, this is a, a, an issue that happens to predominantly women, where is his position? And so we've had some really interesting uh, discussions about um, how men can be involved and the White Ribbon UK and doing simple things and being present in his business and online and sharing his side of the experience. Because even though it was me that um, went through it, he's been there predominantly on picking me up, you know, to move on with my life and go through the family court system. I was one of those speaking on that day, um, feeling quite terrified um, about sharing that story. But it does uh, make a difference. And it's sad that we have to think, oh, we need men to join in that dependence almost, especially when it comes to changing systems. Um, now, you have spoken about the promise and it's really easy. How how do people commit to the promise, Chris? Well, it's all there online, um, which is <laughs> that, that makes it really simple. We used to have 
physical pieces of paper which people signed and then were very worthy volunteers would have to transfer them from all the stuff we collected at an outside stall somewhere onto a database so that we've actually wow. got them you know but now people do it directly which makes life a lot simpler and the joy for me is when you see those represented on a screen or a map of the UK mm. because you know you say where's the all the postcodes are da, da, da. and you think wow there's lots of people but there aren't lots of people. There are 60,000 odd, um, 70,000 signatories to the White Ribbon Pledge. You know, and why isn't it 700,000? Why isn't it 7 million? You know, mm. um, and of course, other people will say, well, it's only signing something on a piece of paper. And I would love it to be the first step on a great process, a great long journey, mm. which none of us have ever finished. But at least if you do that, you can then always take sense, take somebody's photograph and then you say, why are you taking my photograph for? Because you've just signed the pledge and we want to have a record of you being there. We don't do that, but I, I think it would be another good step to do. Yeah. Um, and, and then encourage people to become a White Ribbon ambassador, which means you have to do some training, online training, which means you're then educating yourself because you should never you have to never end educating yourself about the issues mm -hmm. i mean all, all the stuff about uh, drink spiking you know etc yeah. etc now you know i think wow and so you have to learn more about stuff all the time so that you can then talk about it uh, as well so it starts with signing a simple pledge but then you want it to go on and on and on for the rest of your life Mm, no definitely and yeah I can reiterate about the drink spiking I don't know if you've seen there that for us in Hull the news is that we're coming away from spiking drinks and we're actually injecting people at nightclubs um which seems very scary um but it has also been amazing to see that some of the nightclubs have got the Ask Angela and, you know, all these yeah. different things in place to help um, prevent, hopefully, those situations from arising. Um, even charging your phone behind the bar and offering covers for drinks. So I think it's really important that we can put things in place to make people feel safe as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, no, it's really interesting to sort of look at. Um, now, White Ribbon Day actually happens once a year as a, a national um, event, doesn't it? Um, I believe, is it the 25th of November this year? <laughs> it is indeed. It's always always the 25th, which is oh. the UN International Day to Eradicate Violence Against Women. Mm -hmm. And people say, oh, yeah, well, that's what it's called, the UN International Day to Eradicate Violence Against Women. But that's kind of a mouthful. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. a bit easier to actually call it White Ribbon Day. And we just adopted that because it was spoken of as White Ribbon Day in, in other countries around the world, because White Ribbon does operate in 50 countries around the world, because uh, it's, it's a global problem and it needs a global response. Mm -hmm. um, and, but the 25th of November, there should be people taking action around the planet. Mm -hmm. um, and so you can sometimes see visible uh, recognition of it. Sometimes local authorities will, will fly flags at the town hall or a church will put on a, uh, a, a visual display by having a projection onto a church tower in mm -hmm. the evenings for a few days. And of course, it's, the, it's one of the days of 16 days of action to eradicate violence against women and girls. And so 16 days, that's almost that's two weeks and a bit. Of action, but it's, st it's only, still only two weeks. It's not 52 mm. weeks, and it, and the work needs to go on for 52 weeks. Mm. So it's everyone tries to think of it not as a day, but if it focuses minds for one day, that's great, and then continues for two weeks, that's even better. Continues for a year, and then a lifetime is what we all hope for. Yeah, um, of course. But as I say, by having one day at least if it brings the media's attention more to that, that's really important. And of course, for me, the importance is getting men to stand up and take notice because women have been doing it for a long, long time and men need to be doing it as well. So you'll see those things if you, if you look around you uh, in the community around the UK. 
but if anybody needs any materials so they can run a stall that's fine too yeah no fantastic um well you did mention about um also grabbing photographs of people with um the pledges as a a potential Mm. idea but i do know that you've managed to get photos of celebrities wearing the white ribbon that you can purchase on your website um on the white ribbon website and um can you name a few people that you were so glad to capture <laughs> with those white ribbons on off the oh, top of I, your head <laughs> I, i've got a list here here we are okay <laughs> <laughs> i was making a list for somebody else yes um paul mccartney uh sasha baron cohen rafa benitez gary lineker david tennant uh david beckham um there's uh, the pope was a cracker um <laughs> i was very disappointed not to be there for the pope but i was actually in australia at the time otherwise um somebody said oh come on come to rome i think we are going to have a meeting with the pope and it's just a photo call was was important and the archbishop of canterbury a lot of churches do stuff that on the sunday after mm. white ribbon day um and we'll have um sermons or something like that around the extent of violence against women and girls because there are there's work to be done in faith-based organizations the same way yeah. there's way, work to be done in every institution to challenge um violence against women and girls um so that that was my quick list of, of yeah, no. Lot, lots of politicians because changing the law is important as well so mm. we want to have politicians taking notice and again for them it's a very easy thing to do to uh, have their photograph taken wearing a badge. You know, that's yeah. easy. But then, it, again, we have to hold them to account to do some work um, in their political parties and in their political life to make a difference. No, well, thank you. I mean, even hearing some of those familiar names um you know, it gives you some encouragement, doesn't it, in terms of making a difference and having people out there that have that pledge or promise. Now, mo- moving alongside uh, slightly um, from the White Ribbon uh, UK, you've personally received awards for the work that you've done, including um, Cosmopolitan's Ultimate Man in tw- 2007. And then impressively receiving an OBE for services to equality 10 years later, 2017. How do you feel about, about that? <laughs> it's I, amazing. I, I feel it's, it's two things. It's an embarrassment, but it's a responsibility. <laughs> it's an embarrassment because it's stuff that I should have been doing anyway, you know. Um, although, I mean, I must say, I, I haven't. It has cost me a lot of money to do some of the work that I've done. Um, so, <laughs> then, but, but that's that's not the point, you know. Um, but it's also a responsibility and a call to do even more. Mm. But there's one one thing, there's a little story about the OBE night. The, mm-hmm. the cosmopolitan thing. All these celebrities, the I had no idea who all these people were. Oh you know? no! And they're, all, they're all dead famous. <laughs> uh, so, but anyway, and and uh, but it was that was that was really nice, and it. And it also gave us a real promotion in the very early days to be able to, to then say to other media outlets, oh, I've got this, therefore you need to run a story about the organisation. But with the OBE, as I arrived at the palace, um, a guy said, oh, hello, Chris. Now that was quite, but that was the leader of one of the councils getting an award for their work for public service for donkey's years, you know, working for yeah. public good. And he, he they, their organisation, had become a white ribbon authority. So he recognized me from visiting him there. Mm-hmm. In the queue for being in the right order so that Prince Charles know, know who he's shaking hands with, one of the royal staff said, oh yes, white ribbon, we know all about that because I used to work for the home office and that's, <laughs> that's all good. And then Prince Charles and sa- said, oh yes, wh- you know, whatever we can do. And they did feature in the their twitter feed later and the joy for me from is that it's read by two and a half million people you know or follow yes. so that the fact that it said awarded for white ribbon a campaign of men challenging male violence against women and girls that's what was important and yeah. you notice that um camilla duchess of cornwall has talked about violence against women and girls 
a number of times um, since then, which mm. I, and I, because it, it is an issue which she feels committed to doing some work around. So that's, that's brilliant. I know. Well, fa- fantastic. You should be proud of um, those achievements. Um, and they were just two that I picked out from um, the script <laughs> of, of uh, recognition, I think. there. Um, so, you know, thank you for, for doing everything that you're doing. Um, it's important to raise awareness um, and not only just raise awareness, but making a true difference and an impact um, to people's lives. Um, can you tell us what your plans are, what, what's happening, you know, next for you, Chris? I'm going to keep do, keep going. Um, <laughs> that's what you have to do. That's all you have to do is just keep, keep taking the message forward and keep expecting uh, that more men will start taking the message forward as well. And then retiring. So when I know when there's lots of, <laughs> lots of young 20 year old people, men, saying, OK, yes, we're going to do this because it's really important. Then I might start thinking about doing a bit less. But mm. it's it's always inspiring when you see what some of the women's organisations are doing and you, you feel a great draw a lot of strength from that because you think they're doing fantastic work. And it's so it's quite important for me to do a little bit as well. So the future, yeah, just wider. Mm-hmm. So more organisations and deeper within all of those organisations getting to more of the people until mm. we in the UK have the same sort of level of recognition of, of that a white ribbon means challenging male violence against women and girls until we get to that sort of thing and recognition by 70 80 percent of the population so and until until you know, it's it, on Radio 2 and Radio 1, they say, oh, today is the day when everybody should be out challenging violence against women and girls. It's mm. coming. There's more and more voices and mm. it's heard more and more. And the media coverage is getting more responsible, I think, in terms of the way they cover stories and mm. the way they interview people and the way they refer to survivors. And so it's get so much better than it used to be. But there's so much more to be done. We'll keep doing the work and so will you. Yes, definitely. And um, something that, you know, reminded me right back to the beginning of us talking today was you saying, you know, it's not enough. And that's something that I can relate to in terms of it feeling like it's not enough. But I think you need to be reassured that because you're making a difference, it is enough. And it's just that we have to equip many more people with, you know, with with the training and with the education the resources to come on board to take the pledge and take it forward and put it into action so without you a lot wouldn't have been done as well so thank you chris for all of your work Um, and right back to you as we say (laughs) (laughs) thank you um how so i'm guessing everybody that's um perhaps wondering how they make their pledge right now what what's the website where do they go whiteribbon.org.uk would be a good start um uh but also just just start doing stuff especially for the the, the, if any man gets to hear this message ever oh i don't know what to do doesn't matter Mm -hmm. because of course i've made some mistakes i've tried very hard not to but just by doing something women's organizations have said oh yeah you could have done it this way but at least you did something and that's brilliant and mm. so start doing it. Start to talk to your colleagues and your friends. It's it's not easy. The first step is always the hardest, mm-hmm. but it's always the first step on a very long journey. And I'm sure you won't regret it. No, well, thank you once again, Chris, for joining me um, and for sharing your journey and um, the work you've done and everything that um, brings together White Ribbon UK. It's been it's been such a delight and an honour to speak to you, Chris. Um, so thank you so much for giving up your time today. And again, they'll say right back at you. Cheers. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs>